Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, as I teased in the previous video, I am going to try to wrangle a Class C asteroid and bring it into orbit around Gilly, effectively giving Gilly its own little mini moon. And for this noble effort, I am going to spare no expense. I want the best drills, the best convertitron, and of course our nuclear engine. Okay, I spared a little bit of expense there. I'm going with just one. Possibly this would be less painful if I put more engines. I don't know how long the burns are going to take. I looked up the Class C asteroid. It seems to be between 40 and 200 tons. Now this thing is 33 tons. So, and that gives us 5,542 meters per second with this amount. So, We'll see. Of course, we don't have to worry about the Delta V. We're going to be drilling for the Delta V at the asteroid, assuming it has our resources, our ore, uh, hopefully. Uh, if it doesn't have ore, we're in bigger trouble. Uh, I have put... Uh, let's just go from top to bottom. I've, I've got the big advanced grabbing unit, the claw, and I'm just keeping to the Probodobodyne hex for now, even though I have the Octo 2. I put a full-size ore tank, well, the small holding tank, not full full-size, but not one of the radial ones anyway. Just because I needed space to accommodate the drills, and I made sure that the drills, when extended, did not... Uh, the, the collidable part does not go to the point where I expect the asteroid to be, just for safety's sake, you know. So, might even move them up a little bit more here. Again, just to make sure that there's no question about it. That should easily reach the asteroid surface. Okay, and then we are going to have the lander can there. We've got some mop propellant just in case we want to use this for other things. Uh, I gave it some RCS thrusters and a cabin for an engineer, right? Because everything benefits from having an engineer here. We only have one engineer. Uh, and that is not Jeb, it is Arnard. Everybody else is a pilot, then they are now completely obsolete, right? Oh, jeez. Poor pilots. Anyway, we've got radiators. I don't know how much radiator capacity we need. I've given it this much. And maybe that's enough, maybe not. We'll see. And we've got Commutatron 88s, uh, just in case. And four solar panels, four Gigantors. Um, hold on, let me just make sure when we extend them, they're not gonna, like, potentially hit each- No, they'll be fine. Okay, I think we only need two to run everything. It's 7.5 per drill, because on an asteroid it's more efficient, and 30 for the Convertitron, so that's 45 altogether, and each solar panel generates 24, so if they're- if two of them are getting full power, it's good enough. So either the sun is hitting this way, if the sun's hitting on the tail, that's fine. Um, we certainly need the sun to be somewhere. I got the, a reaction wheel. I might have wanted a bigger reaction wheel. If it turns out that we're turning slow, I'll try and use the RCS to help. I mean, we have to turn the whole thing. Maybe I want a bigger reaction wheel, actually. Well, let's just supplement with... let's unlock this one. Maybe we should just go for it. Spare no expense, like I said. This is sort of hovering above that. Uh, you know what? Let's put that ring at the bottom instead. Hmm. Could be worse. Okay. So, we've got that. So we'll have more... Chork. We've got some stored power. Not a whole lot, but I think it's enough. It's been a while since I've done anything like this. So we're 33 tons. Now the capacity of our main sail Supra was more than 50 tons, so we can easily carry this. And we're gonna try this whole business again with the main sail Supra, except this time I'll wait until the parachutes are fully deployed before decoupling the heat shield there. Hopefully that will make sure that we can save us. And I've added the world's worst landing legs. Um, uh, these things. Maybe I should add extra landing legs to them, but uh, oh, I don't need to do that. Well, I have a guy I'm on the gear action group. I set it to set maximum angle. And I've set maximum angle here to 45 degrees so that when it hits 45 degrees, I don't know if the gear thing actually... Maybe 45 degrees is actually too little. We'll see. Anyway, the intention is for it to sort of stick. I don't know if it'd hold it. 
I don't know if it's any good at all. We'll find out the hard way, I think. Uh, maybe maximum angle should be 50. I don't know. It's a lot of pressure for that little thing to bear. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. So... Uh, hopefully set maximum angle means move it to the maximum angle, but I'm not sure. That is what I'm assuming at the moment. Otherwise, I'll just have to right-click the hinge and manually do it. I haven't used the robotics much, can you tell? So, that's the Astro Driller. We know which Kerbal is going in. I did put some science on, uh, on the pod. Just a little bit. Just the little ones. So we've got that. We'll see. And also, I added some Werner engines onto this, just in case. I want to bring it back. We'll see if we can bring it back. But I'll have to take into account the fact that this uh, heat shield produced a lot of drag, and I don't know what number would be good to bring it back to the KSC. So, I don't know if we can target one already and then just loiter. They're quite a ways away. Eve, the transfer window is like right now, so... Isn't it? Or in a little bit. Eve has to be behind us by about that, so the sooner the better, really. This one is already being perturbed by a Kerbin in such a way that brings its periapsis down. But that inclination is... <laughs> uh, actually, I would much prefer something that's coming in sort of flat than have to match that inclination, so... Maybe that's our first goal here. This is coming in fairly flat, and even though it's really far out, and it's also the first one to arrive. And it is going... It's going clockwise, isn't it? <laughs> so we have to go retrograde. So the reason I want to get to it in Kerbin SOI is just for convenience. I mean, we could meet up with them in... in Kerbal SOI. And launch. Whoa! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh, shoot. What? 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 Uh, uh, uh. This is more wobbly than I'm used to. I should have. Th I think I didn't throttle up. I thought I had said throttle up and everything. Anyway, it's gonna be weird. We're going retrograde. This is already messed up. <laughs> Launch fever, I tell you. We're quite a bit shallower than I usually go for. But probably more in line with what I want to do. Okay, fairing set. Okay, that's a wrap for that stage. Let's get the mission off. Okay, just a little puff. All right. Oh, that's a stack separator? I probably could have just used a decoupler. <laughs> okay, extending. Okay, this is all deployed. Now over here, if I did put down the gear... Yep, it does do that. It goes straight to the maximum angle, which is what I wanted. But it doesn't retract anymore. Hmm. Do we need it to? Uh, well, we need to deorbit first. Let's not inflate that heat shield just yet. Okay, well, we're diminishing electric charge. And where should we deorbit if we wanted the KSC in this direction? Well, yeah, a lot of drag. I'm gonna do it over here ish. <laughs> hmm. I really don't want to hit the mountains. Well, I'm going to try and come down really decisively. So 15 kilometers. It might be really hot, though. Okay, do these. Uh, okay, well, and I've got to pull them up again. It's not that hard to pull them up. Using the gear thing is just extra. Okay. And we want to arm the parachutes. We want to move what fuel we have down. Okay, so... 
We might have underdone it. We should have probably retroed it a little bit earlier. We're going way past. But we're going to avoid the mountains at least. Because we're coming in retrograde, we're technically coming in faster too. Oh, it's leaning badly. Oh, let me come out of time warp. I don't I don't know why it leans like this though. Are we gonna acquire anything? Well we acquired something. I think it's Comsat 4. And again, maybe it's the parachutes on top throwing it off. Because they're heavy. I mean, it should be. Well, they're pretty heavy when there's so many of them. I might have to consider that option of putting them down here and having it land on this side. Be easier to place landing legs on this side anyway. And actually, this flat top is pretty convenient for landing on. Well, will the commsat be around for the foreseeable future? Maybe. Oh, oh, oh god! Okay, physical time warp, not good. <laughs> physical time warp, not good. Question is whether we're going to have the satellite in visual range or, you know, with no horizon problem after these fully deploy. Anyway, I'm going to put the these legs down just for the heck of it. <laughs> They're completely useless in water, of course, I think. Okay, that's full deployment. I'll try and jettison the thing. Uh, please don't come back. <laughs> okay, so that's off. I don't know whether it's a good thing or not. It might have been safer with it on. Recover! I don't want to find out what happens next. <laughs> the parachutes all disappear. You know, sometimes a few of them hang out to help stabilize it and set it down safely. But they all did disappear, so I think... Allowing it to tip over might have resulted in tragedy. Okay, well we got that back, but a little bit far away from the KSC. On to the rest of the mission. It's going to be really close to escape. Uh, that's not good. Okay, so that plane change doesn't cost a whole lot. But we have to hit that at the right time. Okay, so right like that, and then in four days we'll add a maneuver here. Well, we could do the maneuver later until that's supposed to come in. So if we lift our or orbit up, oh wait, I just saw it. Come back here. So, okay, what kind of relative... Keeping in mind that we're using the nuclear engine, we probably don't want to do this right when we're meeting up with it. So instead of correcting this relative speed that we have here to 675 when the asteroid arrives, we'll do that as part of maneuver 3 up here. Well, it doesn't seem to have helped very much. We still have a pretty big relative speed. Ultimately, what we've got here is we're going to boost up first, correct inclination to be able to hit it, otherwise we're just passing underneath it. And then at apoapsis, we are correcting the rest of the inclination, boosting up our orbit for the timing so that we get close to it there. And altogether, we've got 912, 52, an initial burn of uh, 139, and then we'll have to do another 620 to meet up with it. The nuclear engine should be able to do that. Um, yep, we'll just have to do it in that sequence. In retrospect, going retrograde was probably not necessary. We could have probably just flipped our orbit at apoapsis. We're not going that fast at that point. And it wouldn't take that much delta V. 
probably wasted more delta v just launching retrograde than doing a flip of the orbit at apoapsis okay and go probably one converter doesn't need two drills anyway i'm not sure i've we'll have to see about the efficiency that arnard provides okay 0, 0.0, .0. Uh, it doesn't look anything like what we were looking for, <laughs> so, uh, hold on a sec. We want it to be still not on escape, that's important. Being on escape is not helpful. Uh, that's probably too far. Okay. And then somewhere out here-ish, mid-course adjustment-wise, uh-oh. It's not letting me click my orbit. Now? No. Um, well, shoot. Let's just go for it. Pulling it up. And retrograde will be this way. So let's pull it in there. And again, all we want is that descending node to be at our apoapsis. Okay. So that's ideal right there. Well, if it wants to meet us there, fine. So I'm sliding the descending node to where it seems like it wants to make our encounter point. And if we really fine tune it, we should be able to, in theory, get to arbitrarily close. But since we can't do the burn that accurately, well, there I've got one kilometer, but we're not going to be able to do the burn that accurately. So we'll, we'll see what we get. We are recharging. We're really far away from Kerbin. You can see it there. Really on the edge of the SOI. Go. Well, we might have to take that eight kilometers. Okay. Or maybe RCS with caps lock. No, eight kilometers is as good as we're going to get there. All right. Well, we have to wait for that loop. 16 days. Basically got a orbit beyond Nimbus, well at least on most of it. There it comes. Really fast too. It hasn't entered the SOI. It's fast around Kerbal. And to get closer, I'm trying to push the retrograde marker to the negative target marker, so that's why I'm on this side of it. That'll help us get closer. Gotta be careful not to actually collide with the asteroid, though. Okay, we do sort of want to grab it on the sunlit side, just for convenience sake. And the rest should be with monopropellant, I think. You are a class C, right? Anyway, target center of mass, might as well. Slowing down further. Seems reasonably flat in this little bit here. And we're pointing at the center of mass, which is apparently over here somewhere. Let's see. Of course, we can unlock it and do that stuff, but still target the center mass. I think we're okay. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Stop wiggling. Oh gosh. Um auto strut. Okay. Auto strut to heaviest part seems good. I guess that would be the asteroid. <laughs> I'll auto strut this to root part. Okay. So, it seems like we're a little bit off after that wiggling. Okay, that seems closer to the center of mass, so, all right. Maybe, maybe, now we have to do other stuff. Like, figure out how to get to Eve. Now, Eve is a lot closer than it used to be, and unfortunately, we're being boosted out. We're just gonna take our time. I guess. 
Well, there's an encounter, 4,442. We've got 567 right now, but that's why we're going to drill, so. Um, that's in 102 days. Let's just demonstrate that we can drill. Uh, does it? Yeah, it says that it has 85 tons worth of resources. So 90% of it is ore. So start asteroid harvester. Start asteroid harvester and start liquid fuel production. Well, as expected, the two drills are overpowered for our Convertitron. Okay, well, we're full up on liquid fuel right now. We're going to have to use it before we do anything. So I'm just going to wait until that maneuver, and then we're going to try and get to Eve, and let's fix it up so that it's a better encounter with Eve. That's a heck of a pass. <laughs> Okay, well, air breaking of the asteroid, you know, in theory might work out, but I would like not to risk our Kerbals, so we're not going to do that. So Gilly has a target, and we will manually capture to a high orbit that will allow us to correct, hopefully. It's going to be a lot of work, 551, and then you got to correct that inclination. Maybe we can capture in such a way that we don't have to, but no, it's all looking pretty rough here. Well, we'll just wantonly use Delta V all over the place, why not? I think we've got it, so might as well use it. To the tracking station and we'll time warp to the first node. We really should have gotten the potato roid named Yam though. And now regret not doing that. We are demonstrating our ability to protect Kerbin from asteroids. Meanwhile letting a whole bunch of asteroids fly right through. But you know that they're not all trying to hit Kerbin or anything. I'm willfully not checking which ones are trying to hit Kerbin but just not in line with my B612 flag. Oh, I wish I had a probe core or a pilot who could turn to the maneuver node. Okay, well, I'll trust the burn time. It's gonna be long. It's gonna be long. And I sure hope we can fizz warp during it. Okay, and go. Tiny little engine. Okay, fizz warping. Please hold it steady. Forex. The forbidden Forex fizz warp. Okay, I'm going to go do something else. Actually, before I do something else, I might as well activate one drill at least. Yep. I don't know if... I don't think we'll be able to keep ourselves topped off with propellant, but maybe we'll be just good enough to do this burn without a pause. Okay, we have been able to do the burn without shutting off the, well, without uh, stopping, without any pause, so that was good. We could probably do a burn twice as long. The radiators are getting a little bit hot, and our node is wandering, so I need to turn. And I'm definitely not gonna turn during time warp. <laughs> this warp, I mean. Uh, it's dangerous. Okay. Has been a long burn. We have an encounter with Eve. That's baseline what we need. We are crashing into Eve. That's not so good. Um, I doubt RCS is going to be enough for that. Let me go prograde and see. Let me just... Yeah, we need to go the opposite direction, so. Okay, that's safe. All sorts of stuff dancing about, though. And we're going to capture. And that's going to take some time. Not as long as this burn, though. 
Okay, well, there's a gilly encounter. Okay, so how much of our asteroid is left anyway? Well, we, uh, we're we down to 70 tons altogether and 61 tons of ore. So we've used quite a chunk of it, and then we are still using more of it right now. Well, now this stuff has to be done pretty precisely. So we are at a safe periapsis. That's first thing which is important. Okay, turning to the maneuver node. We will also keep an eye on that periapsis to make sure it doesn't accidentally dip into Eve's atmosphere. Because once again, this is going to be a long burn. Can't even see the plume when the asteroid's in the way. Why is our orbit speed... Well, it's because we're getting closer to Eve faster than we're decelerating. That's why our orbit speed is going up. Well, we're not going to have enough electric charge for all that stuff, so... Um, stop, stop. But we have to... Okay, we need to keep running the engine, otherwise we're not going to have enough power for the reaction wheel. We have passed periapsis, but we haven't captured yet. Our plume sort of matches Eve, in a way. It's like it's the right plume for the area. Come on, that thing in the corner is already saying I've got a 10 day period. Okay. Well. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, let's shut down there for now. Okay, there we have an encounter. 843 we can manage it for. Um, I'm gonna try and make sure we're pointing through the center of map. I mean, okay, that changed the target because that was Gilly. Um, okay, hopefully that's better. Considering we're, we were going to Eve, we probably overdid the solar panel read. But if we want to use this further away from the sun, like at Duna, it might be good that we brought all this. Okay, getting to know just in time for the burn. And burn. Yeah, okay, yeah, fizz warp. At least 3x fizz warp is not happening. I pointed it through the, t the center of mass as well as I could. Oh, it's because I've got it on prograde. Shoot. <laughs> That's silly. Okay, we are nearing the end here. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, maybe overburn. Let's see. Uh, I can't see. Uh, no, we're getting closer. Okay, now it's going further away. All right, but we have a little periapsis there, so we'll take it. All right, well, I don't know how much it's going to take to capture, but we'll have a few seconds to do it because that's how gilly encounters work. I haven't really done the science at the asteroid yet, have I? Got all these antennae, log gravity data, Eve Midlands, though. Okay, Arnard is right on there. EV report now. Still high over Eve. Oh, take sample. Okay, we've got a sample. Asteroid sample. It's not much, but it's something. So, Gilly encounter in four minutes. We've only got seven minutes. Maybe I should... Target retro right now. Maybe that'll help. We'll see. Does it look like it's changing my orbit properly? At least the periapsis we going up. Yep, yeah, periapsis going up. Apoapsis currently going up too, which is not right, but... Okay, we'll see whether this helps a little bit. So we are approaching Gilly and trying to start our orbit burn early. Oh, we've entered Gilly SOI. Well, that doesn't look like retrograde 
Okay, trying to slow down continues. I think we'll make it. I didn't say a specific orbit around Gilly, right? There's a satellite in a specific orbit around Gilly, but we're not doing that right now. Just any orbit around Gilly. Previously undisturbed Class C asteroid. Mm, we might not be able to make it quite right. We could re-encounter Gilly or something if we exit the SOI, we'll see. It's looking like, like that might be necessary. Okay, we have reached Gilly Escape. I'm just going to keep burning in the same direction. Uh, maybe we should take one of those little encounters that happen. Here comes another one. Well, it's an encounter. Maybe. Potentially. Okay, let's wait. Another 17 days? What's another 17 days after all the time we've taken? Hmm? Okay, we are only 78 meters per second different. Just need to slow down a little bit here. Should not be hard. Okay, alright, alright. It's rotating all over the place. Um... All right, it has accepted it. Bring a newly discovered Class C asteroid into an orbit around Gilly. We have done it. Arnard Kerman is our official asteroid wrangler. And, yep, that took a long time. It wasn't difficult, difficult, but it took a long time. But here we are. Gilly has a moon. We should let go of it, but I won't do that just yet. It ended up being 28 tons with 19 tons of ore left, so it's a lot lighter now. But anyway, there you have it. We can't get Eve and Gilly in the same shot, unfortunately, and Gilly's a little bit shadowy right now. But, yep. We will see what we do next time. I don't know yet. We'll see. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.